So um, I'm going to start with this slide connecting my presentation to test presentation, uh, which shows like an explosion of LBS applications in the last two years, uh, from tens to thousands, ten, uh, to almost ten thousands now. Um, so up to two years ago, we were talking about introducing Wi-Fi positioning as a valuable um, part of the positioning ecosystem. Now, in the last two years, we see Wi-Fi positioning move really to the core. Major players, uh, big companies, all um, considering Wi-Fi positioning uh, to some degree, even look to back up uh, market is aggressively moving toward enabling that platform with uh, GPS. And for that platform, you know, the use cases maybe not really part of positioning uh, become even more important. So now, in the last few years, the message is Wi-Fi is going from being an option really to the core as part of the core technology alongside with the GPS. And why? Because it's fast. The location comes within a second. Because it's everywhere. And uh, I do have a CDM of error, which is, a little, which is a little bit different than Martin's graph. This is actually a canyon test done in two major cities. This is only indoor and urban canyon test comparing GPS and Wi Fi. Uh, uh, it's mostly like lobby of the hotels, uh, bookstores. Uh, since I was actually involved in uh, processing all the data that they collected, I know mostly are uh, like shops and those places. And one more thing that happened is the usage. I want to show you this map, which is the eastern part of the state of Massachusetts. Exactly the same map. All the red dots is Wi-Fi positioning request coming to our server. And as you see, from the early days, we were talking about Wi-Fi positioning as important element for providing location, indoor, urban canyon. And now, the fact that the fix is coming so fast, becoming critical to even provide location in, um, in everywhere, basically. So after this introduction, I want to go to my, to my first topic. So what's next? Now Wi-Fi positioning is at the core. What do you want to do next? I want to repeat Doug and Martin, which is we have components in the core technology, GPS, Wi-Fi positioning, sensors, and the next step is really actually looking at all these as, a, as one integrated solution. And I have this results. This is actually XPS solution from, from Skyhook which shows uh, the blue line is simple waterfall logic which uses GPS as primary source of location and WPS as a backup. So it uses GPS as primary and WPS uh, water pushing as a backup. Red uh, black line shows the best selection based on public information available from GPS and WPS. In other words, both of them using, using an NBA interface from GPS, we use GP, WPS, select the test. And the red one is the optimal solution uh, that XPS provides. And, and you see this actually tight integration helps so much improvement. But even beyond that, this is something that already done. But even beyond that, we can actually have another 15% improvement if we tightly integrate GPS and Wi-Fi positioning. And by tightly integrate, integrating these two, I meant each and every satellite raw measurements and Wi-Fi positioning measurements from access points, if we take all the raw measurements, that integration can even improve at least 15% accuracy of this, com of this combined uh, solution. And I believe there are rooms to really grow and improve this uh, investment. Next, I want to go back to Wi-Fi positioning. 
So Wi-Fi positioning, what was the basic approach? Definitely different than what um, GPS and cell positioning. Um, uh, basically, uh, the basic approach is having a deterministic system. All the reference points are known. In the case of Wi-Fi positioning, anchor points are moving all the time. So there is a dynamics in the environment that APs move, <coughs> APs die, Environment change, there are permanent changes to the environment which impacts radio propagation. But on the other side, there is a redundancy in the system. There are so many anchor points, there are so many access points. And these access points are not meant for position, they are not calibrated for position. So they behave totally differently. Uh, and one thing which is an important feature of this system is the continuous feedback. It's just so each and every usage is a snapshot of the radio wave of that point. It's not like the GPS, um, the entire system is a closed sort of um, form system which takes feedback from users and improves the entire system in terms of knowledge of the dynamics of the environment and also in terms of understanding of the Radio propagation of access points. So I, I want to show you first this, which is the drive test in Boston, in the real drive uh, around Charles River. This shows the blue uh, circle shows type of location, and I actually on purpose put uh, on simple centroid algorithm here, which only takes access points and finds the average location. Uh, access points. I mean, because of the river, it's much easier to see what would be the difference. And and one uh, example of two uh, commercially available systems. These are two uh, wide position systems available commercially, which both do systematic drive. They both collect data organically. And I want to show, it's not only the drive, it's not only actually collecting the data, it's a, it's a brute force part um, way and we have to have so many ways of systematically uh, optimize the process of collecting data, but it's not only collecting those anchor points. Um, so the difference, and, and the system number two is, is a, it's actually backed by a billion dollar company. It's not a small work, but it shows, and that the test itself was, it was very uh, extensive, almost 700 points in 20 US uh, and Europe, uh, different cities. So, I, so my point here was, there's a little bit more than just driving, and, uh, and this is uh, the impact of post-processing on algorithms and understanding the regular characteristics of each and every access point. Just because access points are not calibrated for position. Next thing, as <coughs> Martin said, which was correct, is dynamics of the environment. So this is a very dynamic environment. Average access points move 5% per month. I mean, it varies between different places, but it varies, it, it actually, access points change 5% per, per month. So that's the reason that the feedback coming back from users is a crucial part of designing the whole system to be able to capture and deal with this uh, uh, dynamics. One uh, important question, uh, was if you want to actually build a Wi-Fi positioning systems with such a dynamic environment, when users are millions of iPhones, millions of handsets, do we need to drive? Or all the feedback that we're getting back, so we already said, the feedback is, a, is an important part of the whole system, which helps us to basically capture these dynamics to some degree. And the question is, so do we need to drive? And this was a very important question uh, for us in Scott and Gaspar. So what we did 
in order to answer that question, we said, let's actually see if we can build a Wi-Fi positioning system based on only users' collection, collected data. So what we did, we basically took our own, so we have millions of, 60 million, 50 million devices out there using Wi-Fi positioning. So what we did, we said, what, what, how are we going to collect data? Theoretically, maybe two ways. One, we collect data only when users use the system. Whenever the user requests a location, we take that request and they actually build the database. Second, we don't we, we not only use usage, but also we use backup scanning. So this was this assumption for us that wherever a user goes, there's a tiny engine which randomly actually without, without users in intervention scans for access points. Definitely more effective. Uh, I mean, we put privacy issues aside, this is just a theoretical work, so we were building a model. So two different two different models. For the first model, we did have a user behavior because we have and we considered Boston as a test test bed. We have 6.8 million people in uh, Metro Boston. And you consider our usage density, real usage of Wi-Fi positioning. And we consider the number of phones, same as iPhone, and we use basically the same usage model as iPhone for the first one. The second model was more involved because when users move house, they go to work, they travel in between, we assume that there's a random, basically, sampling of, uh, of Wi-Fi access points. So for that, we assume users have one home, and we, had, we actually assign an office to each and every user. We uh, basically, uh, based on the density of residential in Boston, and based on the commercial footprint in Boston, we assign home and work to each and every user. Again, we use iPhone usage model, which is a very aggressive model. And we use, uh, again, same number of phones as iPhone. And we assume that users travel one hour per day, go to work, and one hour, and these are actually assumptions here, one hour per week, they go <coughs> wherever they, they want to go, randomly. Uh, we assume some uh, GPS attachment to the data coming back from the users. And this is actually a heat map of WPS usage in Back Bay in downtown Boston. And the results were interesting because in terms of the coverage, if it's only user-initiated coverage, still we, uh, we don't have a significant yield <coughs> just relying on, on users. One, one thing that I forgot to say is we already uh, incorporated two other things into the model. One was decay because of this dynamics in this environment. So there's a decay that based on our knowledge of our own system in Boston, we apply the same decay. And also the second one is that movement probability which happens in, um, in Wi-Fi uh, access points. Last, uh, I want to uh, also come back to the new emerging technologies coming out of this um, accurate, everywhere, location uh, engine, 300 million requests with tens of millions of accuracy, which opens up the door to basically be able to analyze mobile users' behavior. Uh, this is a very interesting area. Uh, we started actually looking at how we can understand um, basically mobile user behavior. Uh, we Release the spot rank as a public API, and this is actually based on the 
25 by 25 meters tiles every 15 meters, 15 minutes, and, and the ranks are based on uh, the rank of the tile within the city, within the world, the rank of the world, city in the entire world. Uh, so this is this is actually this is a new new very interesting area uh, that we are learning. I had a couple of examples here um, from the data itself. It shows um, basically the user behavior in uh, normal day in downtown Boston or weekend in downtown Boston um, in suburb behavior in during the weekend like Sunday, uh, which is different than uh, downtown or Monday traffic, which happens to be the worst in the week, and it shows in the data, same thing. Uh, and for people who are working in this area, uh, there is a again behavior analysis uh, uh, data that uh, I just wanted to show uh, for people who work in this area, just to see basically the three major Again, vectors of uh, the, one of the tiles, which shows normal day, blue, and uh, nightlife, and also the high day, high day activities. And conclusion. So I was trying to cover three main messages. One, Wi-Fi really moved to the core now, and it's supporting tens of thousands of emerging applications. Uh, Wi-Fi system, Wi-Fi version system is a stochastic system and it really involves statistical analysis of the data, different approach to GPS and cell positioning. And last, that list is the WPS usage. Database can be instrumental to more refined analysis of <coughs> behavioral analysis of human communities. Something that we try to pursue with MIT um, research labs and hopefully we're going to have more in the next program.